Hi, I'm Morgan Jones and I'm from the University of Southern California. I'm really excited today to talk about this new method that we developed for studying fluid flow called mode sensitivity. The general idea behind this work is that many modal decomposition techniques aim to approximate a fluid flow into a set of mode structures that one can visualize and interpret. In this case, we're interested in looking at modes in a new perspective using Lagrangian coherent structures. And what we get from this approach is these new unique structures that actually tell us a lot about how these modes actually affect the overall flow field. So we've actually seen these LCSs in a number of different areas, including the ocean as depicted by this animation from NASA, as well as even in the atmosphere as depicted by these satellite images. So the term Lagrangian refers to the motion or transport of fluid particles, individual fluid particles. And uh, the coherent structures term refers to patterns, whether they are recurring or um, organized that users can uh, visualize and also um, understand clearly. Now, um, a more mathematical approach to actually describing what LCSs are, are a collection of attracting or repelling manifolds where these blue regions are, have particles that are con constantly attracted to them. And then um, at the same time, these particles are also constantly repelled by these red regions. So this is a new, so this is the mathematical perspective in which we can characterize Lagrangian coherent structures. Now we can actually compute these structures through what we call the finite time Lyapunov exponent, or FTLE for short. So the first step in computing these is by considering our fluid velocity as a dynamical system, um, such as this one, which is a function of both space and time. And then the next step is to essentially initiate a grid of tracer particles in the flow. And we can integrate these particles either forwards in time, like this, or backwards in time, like this. And so at the end time capital T, we will get um, what we call a flow map uh, phi. So this flow map actually characterizes the um, mapping between the particles from the initial position to the end position at time t. Now, uh, in computing the FTLE, the main thing that we're interested in is the stretching of neighboring particles with respect to each other. So uh, with this, we can actually compute what we call the flow map gradient, which is essentially a matrix that contains information of the amount of stretching, compression, but also rotation of these neighboring fluid particles. And uh, we're primarily not interested in the rotation in the fluid particles, mainly the stretching and compression. So uh, the way in which we can um, uh, circumvent this issue is we can take the transpose of this matrix and multiply it by itself. And this gives us what we call the strain tensor. And so uh, this strain tensor actually has information uh, purely on the distances between neighboring particles and not just their rotational aspects, right? So it turns out that the eigenvalues of the strain tensor actually um, correspond to how much stretching and how much compression we actually get in the flow field. And um, really, we're primarily interested in the maximum amount, the maximum eigenvalue, which tells us how much the particles maximally diverge uh, away from each other. Um, and so this is the FTLE, and we can actually compute this everywhere in uh, the flow field. And if we do that, we can get what we call our attracting manifold, or our backward FTLE. And then we can also get our repelling manifold, or our um, forward FTLE. All right. Um, awesome. So um, what's really interesting about these structures is what happens when you perturb them. So uh, to show you what I mean by this, let's consider this dynamical system, which uh, in, can be thought as perhaps as a part of an ocean current. So this is the forward FTLE field. So we get these two uh, U-shaped structures. Now uh, let's consider a second dynamical system. One can perhaps think of this as an atmospheric um, air current that is, per is periodically moving up and down. And uh, if we combine these two together, we can kind of say in the sense that this air current is kind of per, is, is perturbing the ocean currents. Um, and if we c compute the FTLE field of this, we get um, a new different type of structure. But notice how it looks really similar 
to the original uh, structure here. Um, but now we get these additional horseshoe structures uh, forming and uh, coming off of this, this U-shaped structure. And then we also get this additional deformation from this, uh, this structure on the far right here. So we thought this was really interesting and wondered, was there a way to characterize the sensitivity of these LCS structures with respect to the dynamical system G? And so it turns out that uh, Casas and Haller actually not too long ago thought about this idea and they named it model sensitivity. So the idea behind model sensitivity is this. So we first consider an idealized trajectory that travels uh, at the starting point t dot to um, the end time based on the flow field f. And then for the same particle trajectory, we now consider the trajectory perturbed just slightly um, from that epsilon g term. And so the idea was, can we essentially find an expression for the difference between the two trajectories, or known as um, the, um, the trajectory uncertainty? So Kazas and Haller actually found an expression for uh, this trajectory uncertainty, and that is essentially the model sensitivity. So the model sensitivity is essentially a product of the amplitude of the ideal, uh, the amplitude of the um, value of g felt along the ideal trajectory multiplied by the summation of Lyapunov exponents along the ideal trajectory for variable times f, or variable times uh, s, sorry. Um, so, uh, this real, so this expression really only cares about the ideal trajectory. It's not necessarily concerned about this perturbed trajectory, but it essentially aims to approximate this perturbed trajectory using the model sensitivity uh, expressions. So uh, this is essentially model sensitivity, and we can compute this um, everywhere in the flow, similarly to how we computed the FTLE field. So if we actually compare the two fields, so the model sensitivity here is at the top, and then the FTLE field here is at the bottom, we can see some similarities in lobe dynamics, which is really good. And then some additional movement here at the top right, which may correspond to the actual deformation of the, um, the, the rightmost side. And so one of the questions we had was, what exactly does the model sensitivity mean? So um, the, if the FTLE field is essentially the sensitivity of the flow with respect to initial particle positions, then the model sensitivity field describes the sensitivity of the flow with respect to the actual perturbation G. So you can actually expect high values of MS, uh, such as here and even here, to change this baseline FTLE flow field, which is exactly what we saw in the previous slide. Um, and so what's really interesting um, about these, these two flow fields is what happens when you take the difference between the two. There, there turns out to be a connection between the two, and the difference is this FTLE perturbation component zeta here. So zeta is essentially the, um, the direct perturbation to the actual baseline FTLE field. So these, these dark and yellow bands are essentially the driving features for this model sensitivity field, the transient components of it, right? So this is model sensitivity. This is what Kazas and Haller essentially showed. And we thought, was there a way in which we can actually extend this framework to account for modal decompositions? And in this context, could we perhaps reframe the term model sensitivity into mode sensitivity for individual modes or collections of modes as well? So um, really quickly, um, a quick overview on modal decompositions. These methods are data-driven and they aim to take a fluid flow either from experiments such as these or even simulations and express them as a set of linear um, or um, uh, generalized modes that one can visualize and uh, study. So um, a lot of, many of the variants of um, DMD and also POD also fall under this general idea. Um, and uh, to kind of show what this data is, this here is experimental particle image velocimetry data 
of um, an oscillating, uh, a heaving and pitching airfoil, right? Um, so the idea behind model, the, the, the idea behind mode sensitivity essentially is to say, can we consider a certain set of modes as our main dynamical system F, and then can we consider the remaining modes that we're interested in uh, as our perturbation G? And can we compute the mode sensitivity field with this um, model here? Now, one thing I want to kind of mention uh, here is that so long as the uh, main dynamical system F contains a majority of the dynamics to, uh, in comparison to the original flow field, there can be a lot of flexibility in terms of what we want to choose epsilon g to be. So epsilon g doesn't necessarily need to be mode 2. It can be um, mode 8. It can be mode 20. It can even be a collection of modes. So say mode 3 to um, mode 3 to 12, essentially. So a summation of, of those. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what we can choose that mode to be. Um, it's really user specific and it's also problem specific as well. Um, and so if we look at this particular uh, mode and the mode sensitivity field, we can actually see some strong similarities between the FTLE field and then the actual um, MS field, right? The dynamics are similar, but if we look at the difference between the two, we can see something different, some really unique coherent patterns forming. And what's most interesting that we didn't see in either one of these fields is the leading edge vortex that comes here and essentially develops into this, this baseline FTLE structure. Again, the um, zeta is essentially a perturbation to the FTLE field, right? And so what exactly does this mean? Well, if we actually look at the FTLE of the full system, now including that perturbation G, we can actually see now these ripples in the uh, reverse Kármán vortex streets. So these, um, uh, so perhaps one can uh, say that this, this um, leading edge vortex that's developing here is essentially responsible for the shear layer instabilities in this reverse Kármán vortex street, these, these ripples. And we are able to determine that information from only this FTLE perturbation term, which we thought was really cool. So this is a really cool example in which you can use um, mode structures or you can use mode sensitivity to better understand mode structures, right? Um, we also looked at um, flow across a turbulent channel. So uh, this is turbulent channel uh, flow. This is the streamwise uh, velocity. And then uh, this here is the uh, FTLE field, the forward uh, or repelling FTLE structures of the full flow field. So notice how there's a number of intricate small scale features that we can clearly see here. Now, one of the ideas behind turbulent flows and how they are driven is based on these larger scale structures that exist. So these larger scale motions are essentially, the idea is that the, these large scale motions essentially drive these smaller scale features in the flow. And uh, one way we can show that perhaps is through mode sensitivity. So if we use this mode in computing the MS for, um, uh, for this system, we can actually see that there are certain patches in which this large scale mode actually affects this smaller scale mode. And we thought this was really interesting and a really nice complementary visualization to the many statistical methods used to actually verify which large scale modes uh, more clearly affect these smaller scale modes. All right. So this was a really cool example that we, that we um, came up with. Uh, we also uh, looked at the classical flow over a circular cylinder example. So uh, this here is an LCS, uh, or this here is a FTLE perturbation mode. And notice how it covers a very wide region here, right? Um, but the FTLE field has very thin and distinct lines. So only some particular areas are only useful to actually understand how this mode is actually affecting the LCS structure. So um, if we actually overlay the FTLE field with this um, 
this FTLE perturbation field, we can now see particularly where these green regions are actually affecting the, um, the LCS structure. So this can amount to um, increasing the shear, uh, the shear layer rollup, or also deforming the actual um, structure, right? So this was a really cool example. And honestly, we really only scratched the surface in terms of uh, what we can do with mode sensitivity in trying to understand our flow system and fluid dynamics a lot better, right? So one thing I really want to highlight is that this method is really robust to the decomposition approach that you use. Many variants of decomposition, such as spectral or balanced POD, um, can be used as well. And um, we can also treat uh, the perturbation G rather than a mode as perhaps noise or um, mode plus noise in which we can find how um, the, in which we can find the impact of actually um, of, of removing that noise from experimental data. So you can use the mode sensitivity field in this way as well. Um, but uh, with that, um, for more information, we have an archive preprint. And um, I'd like to thank you very much.